Hello and welcome to the Networking Partner Spotlight Show. I'm your host, Jimmy Curtin. I'm founder and CEO of Next Level Sales Performance. We help companies and individuals accelerate their sales revenue and earn more money. So I'm very happy today to introduce my special guest. His name is Jeff Sandine. He is president of Sandine Strategies. So with that, Jeff, tell us a little about yourself and your company. Thank you, Jimmy. It's great to be here. So I am Jeff Sandine. I'm a certified financial planner and wealth manager. I've been in the business for 25 years. In 2005, I founded my own firm, Sandine Strategies, offering securities through LPL Financial, who are a member of FINRA and the SIPC. Uh, my ideal clients are business owners and executives in their 50s who want to experience life to the fullest. And it's just, it's just a pleasure to be here. And I'm looking forward to uh, having a chat about sales. Great, Jeff. I appreciate that. As you know, one of the key questions that we like to ask all of our guests is, how, do you, how in business do you define integrity? You know, that's such a great question. It's, it's foundational, really, to the way I operate in business. In fact, it's one of my three core values. To me, at its, in its essence, integrity is honoring your word and your commitments. And I believe that you really can't run a solid business if you're not running with integrity. And there's, it's a really, really deep subject. And I could go on for a, quite a while about that. If your audience is interested in more on integrity, I can certainly reach, they can reach out to me or I can put them in touch with people that really do an excellent job of training on leadership and integrity. Great. So let me ask you, what's the real value proposition of what your company offers? I, you know, the value proper proposition of Sanding Strategies is really the depth at which we um, pay attention to our clients and the our ability to just listen to what they've got to say, solve the problem that's immediately in front of them. We we tape a take a deep dive into their situation, talk to them about what their vision for their future is, and then begin the financial planning process. But it really begins with a deep conversation about what they, what they want in the future and their vision. Um, there's no aspect of what we do that's transactional. It's all about um, solving the needs of the clients. And yes, we do have products and services that will solve the financial needs of our clients, but it's always done in a fiduciary capacity where we're keeping the best in interest of the clients first. Okay. So with, with all the different companies that are around and, and today it seems like there's new businesses opening every day, which is a great thing for the economy. But what would you describe as the sweet spot for your business? Well, the sweet spot for my business is going to be back to people that are in their 50s and 60s, executives and business owners. Um, on, for executives, they, they are, we're a good fit for them because they're, in many cases, empty nesters in their peak earning years. So they have the resources to be able to really heavily fund what their vision for their future is. And a good intersection for us and executives are perhaps when they're changing jobs, when they're, they have decisions to make over their retirement packages and benefits packages, we can come in and help those executives make decisions and, and keep the, the train on the tracks in terms of moving forward. The other people we love to do business with are baby boomer business owners whose net worth is tied up in their business. They have the same dreams and visions and goals as the executives, except that their net worth is illiquid. And in order to achieve that, they're going to have to um, 
untap that liquidity in their business and and um, get funding of some sort. It could be any number of different types of transactions. And what we'll do for those business owners is start working with them on building the value of their business so that when they do have a transaction, they'll get maximum value. And I do that using a team of professionals on which I'm part of. Great, great. So as, as you know, we, we all have to prospect if we have a business that nobody owns a business or operates a business without some kind of prospecting. So what is your favorite tool to use when it comes to prospecting? Well, my favorite tool is LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I actually have a couple different things that I do, but that's the one that comes through for me most often. I especially like Sales Navigator um, with the, the depth of which and the, the fine tuning that you can do in your searches and the fact that those searches can be saved and they're updated automatically. Uh, very good way to zero in on a specific target niche. Um, and referrals are also a big piece of, of what I do. I have my own referral network group called Business Pros. Uh, we're about 30 business professionals all calling on small and medium-sized businesses. And we're on the lookout for each other to find opportunities and to refer colleagues in and uh, you know, that, that's been a real win for us over the past uh, 12 to 15 months. Absolutely. No, nothing better than a good referral. It's, it's warm when it gets to you. And uh, when it comes to somebody that you respect, then uh, it makes your, your uh, ability to close that opportunity so much better. Yep, I agree. So let me, let me ask you, so there are a lot of methods of, of, of staying top of the mind when it comes to clients and prospects, what's your favorite method to use to do that? Well, with, with clients, I'm on a regular review cycle, quarterly reviews. Um, last year, they were Zoom. This year, I'm excited to say that I've had a few in person already and, and looking forward to getting back out there and seeing them live, shaking hands. So with clients, that's my primary, my primary method. Um, but I also stay in touch with clients and prospects by posting to LinkedIn articles, videos, um, sharing information on economics and investing. Um, and, you know, the, the one area that I could say I could improve on in the, the staying in touch mode is to have a good CRM. Right now I'm using an Excel spreadsheet and it's a fairly manual process. So that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big to do item for me this year is to get a, a high quality CRM system in so I don't have to run so many of the campaigns and things uh, manually. Right. Yeah, and that's a that's that's a tough one because there there seems to be a new CRM system around every corner. I yeah. Mean, I, could, I could sit here and think of probably a dozen just off the top of my head right now that are out there and. Uh, so it's a lot of a lot of things to choose from for sure. That's one of the reasons why I haven't done it is I you know the amount of work that's required to find the right one and the two qualities that that I'm looking for is a high level of customization and something that renders well on mobile devices. Right. Right. Yeah, good point. Very good point. So we're all salespeople. Uh, CEOs, you know, founders of businesses no matter what you do in a company, you're a salesperson. So how do you know when a salesperson's doing a great job? I think it's when you see that they're following a process. And if there's a solid, I mean, first you have to have a process, but a solid proven developed process that if you stick to it in good times and bad, it'll lead to results. And this was especially important last year where, you know, things weren't so great and people could get thrown off track. But I believe that salespeople with a process ended up doing OK. And, you know, the metrics may have changed a little bit. It may have been a little bit harder to get in touch with people. But I, I believe that those adjustments can be made if the process is good. 
And the other thing that a process should do is it should qualify prospects very well, very near the front end. The last thing a, a salesperson wants is a pipeline full of unqualified prospects. That's not a strategy for success. So, so I would say uh, having a process and getting qualified process into the pipe, prospects into the pipeline very early in the process is very important. That's great. And, and you touched on two key things for me. And that first one, of course, is process. And if, if, if a company does not have a, a, have not developed a process, they don't have it documented so that it's repeatable, uh, they'll have a hard time with being successful. So that's a, that's a great one to point out. And the other thing you mentioned was, you know, uh, the, the, the quality of, of prospects in your sales pipeline. And that, that process does help you keep that at a, at a top level. So yeah, that's great. So last question. So what is your best advice when it comes to closing more business? You know, that I have a simple answer for that one. I think for salespeople, it's to talk less and listen more. <laughs> and when they do talk, ask intelligent questions that help you get to understand the prospect or the client better. Very, very true. Great. That's great. Well, listen, it's been a great uh, few minutes to, to visit with you. I want to give you an opportunity to let everybody know how they can contact, contact you. So what is your contact information? So my email address is jeff.sandine at lpl.com. And my website is sandinestrategies.com. And of course, I'm on LinkedIn and uh, look forward to ha reach, having people reach out and reaching back out. I, I'm a very um, strong believer in the power of networking and getting to know other folks. Absolutely, networking is great. Well, Jeff, we wanna thank you again for being our guest and uh, appreciate it very much and uh, go out and uh, make it a great day. Thank you, Jimmy. It's good seeing you again. Take it good easy. Good to see you.